Hi, this is Chiwi here. In this video lecture, we will be talking about muscle testing. This is the first of two videos, and in this video, we will focus on manual muscle testing. Just a reminder of the learning outcomes of this video. We want to critically evaluate the strengths and limitations of different methods of muscle testing, and also to be able to apply muscle testing with the validity and reliability of each method on our minds. Looking at the range of muscle strength testing methods, you can group them into three broad categories based on their characteristics. Firstly, we have the isometric methods, where the muscles are tested against an immovable object. Therefore, the muscle is in relative constant contraction length. Next, we have the isotonic testing methods, where the tension within the muscle remains the same whilst the muscle length changes. This is what we usually call concentric and eccentric contractions. Lastly, there is the isokinetic testing methods, where the speed of the movement is kept constant. This is usually difficult to perform manually and therefore requires machines to help us achieve that. Why do we want to measure muscle strength? There is a specific and a more general reason. Locally, we can evaluate the muscle we are interested in in terms of its ability to generate and sustain a force. This helps us clinically to assess the patient's condition. And more generally, testing muscle strength evaluates the neuromusculoskeletal system as a whole, because muscle contraction isn't just a local phenomenon. It also, it also involves the peripheral and central nervous system. To be even broader in our assessment, Muscle strength can also be indicative of wider problems that have resulted from other bodily systems. Muscle strength testing can also be grouped according to whether equipment is involved. In this video, we'll be talking about an example of non-instrumented test, the manual muscle testing. In our second video, we will be talking about two examples of instrumented tests. As an example of a non-instrumental muscle strength test, manual muscle testing is used pervasively within clinical practice. It can be used to not just diagnose, but also to provide an evaluation of future improvements, as well as used as a form of treatment itself. Manual muscle testing is a form of semi-objective test where clin clinician observation, palpation, and use of positioning is crucial to its use. The purpose of manual muscle testing is to grade the muscles in order to give us an idea on its fourth generation capacity. Later, we will talk about the specific definitions used for standardizing the grades of muscle contraction. To grade the muscles for strength, there are several criteria we need to take note of during our testing. This affects the grade level for strength that we assign to the muscle. These criteria apply to all of the muscle grading system in use. The criteria are as follows. Firstly, palpation and visual observation of the muscle fiber activation. Secondly, physical demonstration of the joint through its range of motion. The third criteria, consideration of the contribution of gravity to the activation of the muscle. The fourth criteria, resistance from the tester to ensure that muscle is activated maximally. And the last criteria, consideration of the position of both the therapist and patient. There are multiple systems for grading muscle strength. We will now focus on the most commonly used system, which is the Medical Research Council system, also called the MRC scale and also known as the Oxford scale. The MRC scale has six grades for grading muscle strength from zero to five. Zero meaning the lowest grade where no muscle activation is present to grade five, where the muscle is not just able to activate against the influence of gravity, it is also activating maximally for the person's age and sex. The crucial point in the system is grade three, where the influence of gravity is used to grade the muscle activation. 
it is worth pausing this video at this juncture to note down the definition of each grade. You will encounter this often during the assessment of your patients. The MRC scale uses whole integers to grade the muscle activation and isn't in favour of adding half grades in between. However, other grading systems have no issues with adding intermediate grades, as this sometimes allows a more stepped approach to the muscle testing. As with any skills or outcome measure, manual muscle testing can be biased by multiple factors. Therefore, it is crucial to be conscious of how we apply manual muscle testing within our own practice to ensure that it is as valid and reliable as possible. This is usually not an issue in terms of intra-rater reliability, that is the consistency to which we apply testing as compared to ourselves. However, reliability usually suffers for inter-rater reliability when we try to compare our gradings with other clinicians. If interclinician comparison is an important part of the service, then it would be beneficial to have some form of test standardization for manual muscle testing, indeed for any sort of testing and outcome measure usage. For the manual muscle testing procedure itself, there are several things to note about how the therapist applies the testing force to ensure reliability of testing. Firstly, the point where force is applied may determine the response of the patient. For example, if we were to test the strength of knee extensors, there are multiple places the clinician can place his hands on the anterior aspect of the leg. Assuming that the clinician is using the same resistance force, the patient will find it easier to push against the therapist's hands when it's closer to the knee than when it's closer to the ankle. Secondly, the starting position of the limb can also influence the patient's ability to readily contract the muscle. The reason for this is that in a limb or joint position, when the muscle is extremely shortened or lengthened, the muscle force generation is at its lowest. Thirdly, the relative appearance of how strong the patient's muscle is, is really dependent on how strong the clinician is. For a stronger clinician, the patient may appear weaker. Now this also rings true if the same clinician exerts different resistance force to test the patient. Lastly, the direction of the force applied can affect the magnitude of the force applied. A resistance applied at 90 degrees to the limb generates a larger force compared to one that is applied at the same point but at an angle. Once we've tested a muscle, it is important to accurately report the testing done in the notes for record. These are some points to record for any manual muscle testing performed. The muscle you're testing, the muscle range where you have applied resistance, that is in the inner range, mid range or outer range, the muscle grade that the patient was able to achieve, the limitations within the testing method. For example, the patient wasn't able to lie in a prone position and therefore you had to alter the patient's position for testing. Lastly, you should also record the compensatory actions that the patients performed to appear to achieve the muscle contraction. So, what are the clinic matrix properties of manual muscle testing? In terms of validity, it is good compared to handheld dynamometry. For reliability, it is rather variable as it really depends on the specifics of the testing procedure itself. Therefore, different reliability studies for manual muscle testing has different reliability, reliability levels. It is therefore crucial that details of the testing procedure are examined to ensure you interpret the reliability rating in the appropriate context. Manual muscle testing has a ceiling effect. That is, the testing isn't able to differentiate between strengths that are in the upper range of what, is what, we, cons uh, what we perceive as normal. Manual muscle testing also tends to overestimate how normal a muscle is. And most importantly, as it is a categorical skill, it can be rather unresponsive to muscle strength changes that are, that are about between 20 to 30 percent of change. Now this is the end of our first short video on muscle testing. We have touched on the reasons why we perform muscle testing. We have also learned about a common example of 
non-instrumental muscle testing called manual muscle testing. And the MRC scale is a commonly used system to grade the muscle strength in these clinical scenarios. And we've also touched on the important points when actually performing a manual muscle testing. I hope you find this video useful. And in our second video, we'll look at examples of instrumented muscle testing. Thanks for viewing.